Good morning, folks. There were no big solar flares on the sun the last day, but does that mean nothing is happening? Certainly not. Looking at seven days of solar wind, we see the interplanetary shockwave from the Earth-directed CME, ramping the metrics of the telemetry from plasma temperature to phi and BZ perturbations. But then just last night, we saw the speed ramp in yellow. That's a coronal hole stream set in motion days ago by the southern departing coronal hole. And while the initial geomagnetic storm resulted from the CME, this coronal hole rode the coattails of the reverberations and set us right back into that range. Even without flares, we did have an eruption on the sun. Center disk in the north, we saw a filament snap followed by a surface surge. A CME was produced, a tiny one, and while I'd guess some little part is coming this way, NASA's Enlil spiral appears to guess that it will completely miss Earth. Looking at ISWA, our current northern incoming coronal hole maintains some significant force, but note also the extension back that connects to a larger bulb still to come onto the left side of the chart. You can see that extension back across the limb in 211 angstroms and just the cresting bulb now. Gong tells us that this one is of positive polarity as well. Let's also keep watch on our other eruption threat. Two thin dark plasma filaments snaking their way onto the Earth side of the Sun. We'll be eyeing those for destabilization. After some big quakes to start this current watch period, we took yesterday off, with the most interesting tremor being a four-pointer in Montana. Somewhat unusual. ESO's latest is a tremendous work. Galactic collision, stripping gases, and affecting star formation. Link to the article, images, and video can be found below. Just look at these features. Spectacular. Rosetta's big day is here. They'll attempt to hook their lander to Comet 67P today, and if you follow the link below, you can hear the comet sing. Got an interesting article about the ongoing volcano eruption at Iceland as well, including a beautiful false color image comparison from Landsat. Folks, there's a special report on spaceweather.com about a radiation test performed by Dr. Tony Phillips. He found significant radiation flux while getting on an airplane at mid-latitude, during relatively quiet solar activity. Now while this isn't going to kill you, a quick note to website members about the last 12 minutes or so of our latest Fly on the Wall podcast. If you missed it, we discuss what the experts say could happen at high latitude during solar storms. Make the time to check it out. The Arctic blast we've discussed for days is making its presence felt with record snow in Minnesota, record snow in Wisconsin, and record cold in Colorado. More is coming. The wind map shows the devastating southward shift of polar air. Also note the convergence over Colorado and yet another in the northwest. That's what we're in for today, folks. Grab a hat. Meanwhile, warmer temperatures dominate much of Europe as those lows refuse to move. The Mediterranean flow is strong today and might produce the largest watches in the southern alert zone. Down under, we've got convergences west and east in Australia once more, with a loosely formed low over New Zealand, just dumping all the moisture it can. Check your local forecasts. Mobile Observatory is in Walker, Louisiana this afternoon. If you want to come hang out and chat about these topics with us, details about the tour and all our stops can be found at observatoryproject.com. Got some current conditions and shots of our star to close. It's 6.20 a.m. Eastern Time. 520 a.m. Central. That's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.